a leaf like now after that win last week amongst the squad? Uh, yeah, the, the mood's the mood's a lot better this week um, than it has been, you know, in, in previous weeks when we're, we're probably a bit more nervous being closer to that line. But um, it only takes a run of results, and we're, we're back in that position. So I've got to make sure that we're on it. Then the the you know the the happiness and the and the positive feeling isn't isn't um, you know going to going to reduce any performance levels. We, I, I'm demanding. A performance up at Stoke. Um, I've got to. That's what I, that's what we've done all season. Uh, I need I need to see it again. I need to see what we've done again in the last sort of three or four games that I think we've uh, we've been good in. We've um, I mean, even before your time, um, there has been a sort of an issue with having a good result and not backing it up the following game. I mean, is that something? Obviously, you're you're working on the players to stop that happening. But do you, do you think the nature of that win at Burnley just? You know, perhaps is a step further to clearing that sort of hurdle. Um, yeah, I mean, the good result was Norwich at home, you know, um, and we back, we did back that one up, which was great. But as you say, Watford and, and West Brom, we didn't back those results up, you know. Um, but it takes time. It definitely takes time to change a squad, to change the mentality of a squad. And uh, I think it's been a, been a little bit inconsistent all season, apart from right at the very beginning. And you know, I have my theories on that, but it's. Uh, it's it's been it's been tough to replicate performance after performance. Um, it's something that we're working on. We don't we don't really look at the result too much. It's performance what we're based on as, as managers and coaches. You know, you get your result, but you can't you can't just fluke your result. You know, thirty times a season, you, you get one lucky one or two lucky ones a season. You have to deserve the rest of them. And uh, and we, we're working on performance. So the boys have come in this week. They 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 know. They know that, and, and everyone knows. Everyone knows we're not looking at, at help, helping hands from anyone else. We've got to do this our way. We want to do this on our back, and uh, and I want to make sure that there's a performance set and we back up what was a, a brilliant, a brilliant display up at Burnley. Um, Ethan Laird, you left him out of the squad against Norwich, and he came on the second half and played really well against against Burnley. I guess that's kind of what you want as a manager, isn't it? You kind of you challenge a player to prove they should be in the side. Did he? Did he kind of do that? A lot of people react when you leave players out of the squad and, and question it and wonder why. And I think that all I can say is, as the manager, I think it's uh, it's my job to get the best out of these players. And if that if leaving someone out of the squad gets the best out of them, then um, I think it's the right decision. Um, but people will still probably think it was the wrong one or whatever. But uh, it was a uh, it was a great reaction from anything. That's all I'll say. He's a good lad, uh, and we forget he's a very young lad. He's younger than Aaron Drew. People don't even realise that, you know, he's a he's a very young boy and these players are here to develop um, and that's all part of his development. OK, and just so you, you touched on Sinclair before, I mean, sort of long term, how important is what he does and how he plays um, to what you want? Yeah, another another one that needs a lot of development, you know, I brought into the football club uh, and uh, and I, I'm looking forward to really working on his strengths and developing him because he's got he's got so much to learn about the game. Uh, I think I can make him a really really good player, Sinclair Armstrong. Um, I think he's very reactive. He's, 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 he plays on instinct, uh, but the physicalities of him is going to give him a hell of a chance. Um, I think if we can refine him now on uh, the tactical side and the and the awareness side and thinking side of the game, I think that we've got um, we've got a really good talent there and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about what we could do with Sinclair. Do you see him as a straight out number nine, or do you think he's a, well, can be a wide sort of forward? What, what, what do you what do you think of him? Uh, I've only seen him in a couple of games, and so it's really difficult at the moment. You know, he, uh, he's only had sort of three or four games from him, and, and he's got injured quite a few times. His pace, um, he's got he's got a frightening pace. So, um, you know, I, I think he can play anywhere across the front line, and I think he'd be uh, he'd be at home in any position, but. Each position, you know, is different, and you have to learn about the game uh, and learn what's required. And, and so, it it will be about us us developing him and seeing what he can do before we make it an absolute, you know, nailed on position for him. But um, at the moment, he's uh, he's scaring defenders to death, and that's great.